everyone. Can you hear me all right? Can you hear me at the back? I'm sure you can hear me at the front. Well, welcome on this very special day. It's so great to be together. We're going to start with who has received a chocolate egg this morning? Anybody? Oh, that's so great. Next question. Hands down. Next question. Has anybody eaten any chocolate egg already this morning? I knew it. Okay, two more questions. Hands down. Does anybody plan on eating more chocolate today? Oh, I had a feeling that would be the case. It would be wrong not to, wouldn't it? Right, final question. Does anybody here know what the chocolate egg, the Easter egg, is a symbol of? Anybody? 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 Shout out if you know. One, two, three. New life. New life. It's a celebration and a symbol of new life. Oh, there's a lot of excitement here this morning, which is just a greatness. Hopefully that's not just the caffeine out of your chocolate egg. Um, for us, we are celebrating the new life that we can all receive in Jesus. Forgiveness of sins and relationship with him, which changes our life for the better, and means one day when we die, we go to heaven to be with him forever. And today is an extra special day for five people here. And we would like you to raise your hands, and we're going to give them a great big round of applause. Raise your hands if you're being baptized today. One, two, three, four, five. Isn't that so great? And I know a lot of you have brought your friends and family here to celebrate with you, which is just brilliant. It's an outward sign. You'll hear a bit more about this later, but it's an outward sign of what's already happened on the inside for you. Jesus on the inside. And you're going to share a bit of your story with us, how Jesus has changed your lives for the better and how he helps you every day. It's going to be powerful. But before that, we are going to celebrate the greatness of the new life Jesus gives us. So I'd like you to stand to your feet. Nothing in all of history can compare with what Jesus has done for all of us on the cross. Whether you believe this here this morning or not, it's still a reality. He died on the cross. He was raised to life three days later, victorious over sin and death. And we're here to celebrate him. We're going to look at a scripture, John 3, 16, a verse out of the Bible. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life and we're going to sing our praises to him this morning we're going to thank him for the gift of eternal life that's found in Jesus let's sing to him in fact let's start by giving him a praise clap a praise round of applause Jesus thank you for who you are thank you for revealing yourself to us this morning we celebrate your life and we want to give you some praise let's praise him church
experience that love, that those being baptized would experience that love, those who are visiting, Lord, they would experience a reality of your love for them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, your love, perfect, perfect love, perfection. Everything about you is perfect. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, I know that um, all of heaven shouts your praises. But today, Lord, I thank you just for this moment of praise where we can just say how great you are and how blessed we are for what you've done for us in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would you take your seats? It's so good to have um, Easter Day in a special way, like baptisms. Um, and we're going to go downstairs. Uh, I don't know if some of you, when you came in, you actually saw um, this, we call it baptismal pool, but it looks like a birthing pool, actually. Um, <laughs> so it's full of water, and it's not that cold. And... Um, it's just an outward sign, as Pastor Andrea said, of what's happened on the inside for these five amazing um, people 
who are very, very loved. And I know you're coming, if you've come today, it's because you've got friends or family um, who are being baptized. And we might be a bit different to anything you've ever experienced, but I pray more than anything, you'll know that Jesus loves you. That is the most important thing that we actually communicate in some way, whether through the singing or through the baptisms and the stories you're going to hear or um, through everything that we're doing. Um, and uh, I just want to, this morning, bring a short message. Hopefully it won't take too long so your dinner won't get cold or your hot pot or whatever it is. You can uh, go on to that after, after the service this morning. I'd like to talk a little bit about maths. Is anybody good at maths? I am really not good. I think Sean is probably an expert. Um, anybody really good at maths? I, oh, good for you. Some of you young ch children, you, you've got your hands up. Well done. Maths was never my strong point. But um, I always know how many chocolate eggs I have. And this morning, I know it was none. Do you not think that's a sad day? When everybody else gets a chocolate egg for Easter and I get none. However, I did borrow these because we're going to give them away at the end. Everybody can have an egg or a, a chocolate rabbit. And this morning, I took six. And I'd like you six, six chocolate rabbits. Six chocolate rabbits. Now, can anybody tell me, if I ate two, how many would I have left? Well done, you. I don't know your name. What's your name? Finley. Well done. Four left. But what if I gave three away? I'd have one left, wouldn't I? You're very good at maths. Very good at maths. Now, I like buying things. And um, that's something I need to know, to know, is that when I buy things, I am actually adding to the bill that I'm going to pay later. Um, I like adding things to my life, like getting chocolate eggs. I might have to go and buy my own chocolate egg later. Thank you for your support and your empathy. But what I have discovered is this new, for me, relatively new. Some of you may be born with this, but contactless on my phone. Has anybody got... Can anybody pay with your phone? It is, it's like having my credit card, but... I don't need my credit card because I've got it already on. And with my fingerprint, I can actually access my card and walk around, beep, beep, whatever I want. I can actually go and go, beep. I can buy a bottle of milk or I can go to the supermarket and buy a big supermarket trolley full of stuff. The thing is, every... Every full supermarket trolley costs a lot of money. But every beep on my card is a minus in my bank account. It is a plus in my shopping trolley, but a minus in my bank account. So whether it's a little bit of money like milk, or a lot new pair of shoes for Easter. Or I don't know, maybe you would like to buy a toy. And maybe you're saving up to buy a toy, but as soon as you buy that toy, the money you've saved disappears. And you have to start saving again. Now, the thing is about my bank account is I might not feel like anything's going out of it. I might not even think about it, but there is definitely a negative going on all the time in the banks recording every minus that I put on my card. And at the end of the month, I'm going to have to pay the bill. How many of you know what I'm talking about? 
And sometimes that bill makes me gasp. <laughs> At other times, I'm slightly impressed. But every time, every time I make a payment for something, there is a withdrawal. Now, that's called minus, which needs to come back to naught. And actually, if I want to eat, I need plus. I need things to come in so that I can buy things and I can put it on my credit card, but I'm going to get a bill and I will end up paying for it. Now, I'd like to talk to you this morning about God and maths. What does this look like to you? Huh? Piece of wood? A plank? Has anybody guessed that that could be a minus? Yes! That's a minus. This is a minus. The thing with God is that he knows we've all been born with a minus. Now, that sounds strange. But we have. We've all been born with a minus. And throughout our lives, whether we're little or big, old or young, whether there is a little payment or a big payment, it's all a minus. And that minus is called sin. Sin is a big minus to God in his relationship with us. It's a big problem because he can't have a relationship with us because of the minus. And you know, some people think, well, I'm pretty good. I'm not too bad. I'm not as bad as them. I mean, I could look at James and think, I'm really not as bad as you. Surely I'm not. He's a rotter. She, he could look at me and say, oh, thank heavens, I'm not her. I'm so much better than her. Or you could look at the worst person you know and say, they're a big minus to God. They would never go to heaven. But the thing is, with any minus, it still needs paying. Whether it's a 10 million minus or three pounds. It's still a payment that needs to be paid. And so God sees that all of us have a minus. All of us, you could say, have done wrong. All of us have hurt someone. Has anybody ever hurt anyone? That's called a minus. And you take away from that relationship, don't you, when you hurt them? It's something painful that happens. Has anybody ever been hurt? It's a minus. And what can build up is unforgiveness because of what happens to us. But Jesus was sent by God who loved us. He saw the minus, he saw the pain, he saw the heartache, he saw that we suffered. He hears us when we cry out, is there a God who can help me? Does anybody hear my cry? And when he saw, he did something about it. And the Bible says, God saw our problem that caused a separation forever, a minus forever with God. And he says, I'm going to change that from minus to plus. I'm going to change your minus to plus. That, that, is, that is amazing. Because he loved us so much, he gave his son. Now, his son didn't come to take a minus away with money. Because God can actually make gold. He made everything, the heavens and the earth. But he said nothing would do the job except the life of a perfect man. And so Jesus was born, the Son of God. God's only Son was born. And outside Jerusalem, on a hill... 
He was crucified. Can I have Sam? And when he was crucified, he took all our sin upon him. This is why it's such good news. God himself took our sin on himself. Let's look. And changed our minus to a plus. Every minus, every little sin, every massive sin of all of us, all our minuses, and all the minuses of the whole world, God said, money won't do it, but the life of my son will pay the price. It was very painful for him to die for you. It wasn't easy to die on the cross because he had to take the punishment for your and my sin, our minuses. But he didn't just take our sin, he took our sadness. He took our aloneness, our loneliness. He took everything negative to the cross. And on the cross, God said, that's all I need to make your minus a plus. And he changed our pain to healing, our sadness to joy, our debt to forgiveness and being right with God. And so the cross is God's biggest sign that he loves you. The cross is God's biggest sign. I love you so much, I gave my only son. And on the third day, Jesus rose again to prove that he isn't an ordinary person, but that he's God. God's perfect son. And with his blood, he said, he now lives forever. He died and rose again. I love to think how the cross has changed all of history. It's changed my life and many lives here. But maybe you've never considered that you are in a minus moment with God, that you've never had the minus taken away and you've never come into the plus with God. And God says in his, in his word, I'm going to finish with this, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Why did he give him to take away the minus, to take away our sin? That whoever, say whoever, go on, say it out loud, whoever. I don't know whether you know what whoever means, but it basically says, it doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, how bad you've been, or how right you even think you are, Jesus paid anyway. Whether it's three pounds you owe or 10 million. Jesus died. Whoever believes in him, what does that mean? It means you, rather than just being born into a Christian family, you don't go from minus to plus just being in a Christian family or in a Christian country. You can only go from minus to plus if you actually say, do you know I believe that Jesus did this for me? I believe he rose again. He loved me so much that he was willing to do this for me. And to believe in him means to trust him, that he has done it all to take my minus, all my sin, and to give me his plus, his perfect life. To take me from death, eternal separation from God, to life, and from hell to heaven.
from hell to heaven. Jesus died that we might have life eternal with God, a relationship with God through forgiveness of sins. But this happens to whoever believes. Now you see, it's not just me. It's me plus Jesus equals I receive everything that Jesus has done for me. I receive forgiveness. Me plus Jesus has life. Me plus Jesus goes to heaven. Me plus Jesus is forgiven. Me plus Jesus is loved perfectly. God so loved us so much that he gave his only son. Whoever. And these five being baptized today are part of the whoever because they have personally accepted Jesus Christ as the one who saves us from sin and gives us a new life. And you know, the miracle of this is, Sam's doing great, isn't he? (laughs) The miracle of this, what an actor, what an actor. The miracle of this is that whoever believes has all the minus taken out And all the pluses come in. Shall not perish, but have eternal life. It means God's life. Those who are being baptized aren't the same people anymore because they've got a new life on the inside, a new heart. And God has put his spirit within them. And I wanted to take this opportunity today that if you know you're in a minus with God and have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, don't go on living separated from God and in a minus because Jesus has already loved you so much. He's done the work and he wants to give it, his life to you. I'm actually going to finish with this. Uh, Has anybody... Ever heard of the, on Facebook, you can uh, go online and give gifts away called Life's a Gift. Life's a Gift Taunton. Life's a Gift Taunton is is somewhere where you can have something that you don't need or don't want or can't use anymore. And you put it on Facebook and people can actually say, actually, I need that. And it's free. But they have to come and pick it up. So you can't just accept it, even though it's free. You have to go and pick it up. And becoming a Christian is like that. It's already given. Jesus has already given all that is necessary for you, actually, to not go forever without God, but to go to heaven. See, not everybody goes to heaven, only those who have Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And so he offers us the best, offers the best gift ever. But we have to pick it up. We have to say, I'll take that for me. I believe with my own heart and declare that Jesus Christ is my Lord. So we're going to finish with praying. Can we stand together before we go down for these amazing baptisms? And you're going to really enjoy this. But I really believe that there are people here today Maybe you've known about Jesus for a long time and you've even prayed to him. But you've never accepted him into your heart and life to be your Lord and Savior. As soon as you do that, what happens is he removes the sin on the inside of you and he comes to live in your heart and life. It gives you eternal life. If that's you, I'd love you to pray with all of us today because this is the most life-changing thing that can happen to anyone. Whoever believes will not perish but have eternal life. Father, we thank you today that Jesus has already taken the minus of the whole world, my minus, my sin, and the sin of us all here, whether we're young or old, that Jesus died to change my minus to a plus. And Lord, you say life's a gift. That the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. 
And today, Lord, as we celebrate those who have believed that their old life has gone and new life has come, I pray that that would happen in our hearts today for those of us who have never accepted you. So let's say this together. And if you mean to pray to accept Jesus as your plus, he will come in and live in you if you say this from your heart. Lord Jesus, let's say it out loud. Lord Jesus, thank you you died for me to take away my sin, my pain, my sorrow, and to give me a new life. Thank you you rose again from the dead that I need never be afraid of death. Because I know I'm going to heaven. Because I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you that you come and live in me. That I'm no longer alone. But you're with me forever. I'm no longer in the minus. <laughs> I'm in the plus. And I've got peace with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 If you've prayed that for the first time, I'd love you to tell somebody either you've come with or come and talk to us. We'd love to pray with you and give you more kind of guidance on what's just happening because you've just passed from death to life from minus to plus, from hell to heaven. And that is the biggest miracle that can happen in any person's life. So praise the Lord for what he has done. Amen. Now we're going to go downstairs. It's great to see you all this morning. I want to just, um, just a personal welcome to Mo and Farai's children. They've been separated for more than a year, and they are here. Where are they? Can I see them? <laughs> Wonderful. We're just going to pray for these children that they will quickly adapt to living in this new culture, this new place. So, Father, we thank you for these precious children, and thank you for this wonderful family. And we pray, Father, that as they've come to join their parents, we pray, Father, that there will be a real grace on them to adapt and to change. Just speak your peace and your blessing over them as a family. And I pray for days of joy ahead, great joy in being reunited together. And so, Lord, as we go to, to see these uh, people baptized, thank you that you give them boldness to speak about what you've done in their lives. And we're here cheering them on, Lord. And so we pray a great blessing, the power of your spirit on each one as they come up out of the water. And bless our children too. Um, thank you, Lord, that as they leave, they're going to receive chocolate. <laughs> so they can be lasting in peace a little longer. <laughs> and then lots of fun. Bless you. We'll go downstairs. If those are being baptized, if you could... Just prepare and those baptizing, get yourselves ready and get yourselves downstairs and uh, we'll go through this.